How long does it take to get to Mars? I'm going to show you how you can figure this out yourself doing a back of the envelope calculation with just stuff you learned in middle school. Do you remember Kepler's three laws of planetary motion? The first one is that planets orbit the sun in ellipses. In case you were asleep that day, I'll refresh your memory with a mini crash course on ellipses. You can draw an ellipse by putting two nails into a wall and with some string tie the ends together to make a loop and then loop the strings around the two nails like so. And then with your pen pull the string taut and keeping the string taut go all the way around the two nails and you'll end up with an ellipse. Each nail is one of the focal points and the sun will be at one of the two foci. The closest point to the sun is called perihelion and the farthest point is called aphelion. I'm just going to call them min and max. You may have heard that our average distance to the sun is 93 million miles. I always found this annoying because they didn't tell me what they meant when they said the average distance. Earth actually spends most of its time farther from the sun than this average distance. They just compute this number by taking the average of max and min. That is max plus min over 2. According to Kepler's second law of planetary motion, the planet sweeps out equal area in equal time. This means the planet is going faster when it is closest to the sun, so it spends less time there. Imagine that the Earth is here at one point in time, and then a month later it's over here. It would sweep out this much area in that one month. Then imagine later it's over here, and you want to know how far to go in one more month. It's going to sweep out the same amount of area, which would be a much smaller angle. This area here is equal to this area here. This average distance is not a time-weighted average. If you made a list of the distance to the sun for each day of the year, added them all up, and divided by 365, then you would have the time-weighted average distance. Nobody ever uses the time-weighted average distance, so just forget I mentioned it. I just wanted to clarify what is meant for those who can see that there are two possible meanings of average distance to the sun. From here on, I'm going to use the letter A to refer to the average distance to the sun. If we draw an xy coordinate system through the ellipse with x going through the long axis, then this distance here is called A, and this distance here is called B. The equation of the ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. This equation is not important. I just want to explain why I use a to mean the average distance. a and b are standard ellipse parameters. This long axis is called the major axis and this short axis is called the minor axis. a and b are called the semi-major and semi-minor axes. We only need to know a equals max plus min over 2 to do our Mars calculation. Another interesting ellipse parameter is the eccentricity given by the letter E. Here it is, max minus min over max plus min. Down here is the eccentricity for Earth and Mars. As you can see, they're quite small, which indicates their orbits are fairly circular. We don't need to know about eccentricity for what we're doing here. I just thought it should be part of a mini crash course on ellipses. To get to Mars, we're going to have to change orbit, so let's think about how we do that. Imagine this is you in some orbit around the sun. You're going to burn your rocket momentarily, and this will change your velocity. What will your new orbit look like? There are two things you can easily know. The final orbit will be an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci. We know this because of Kepler's first law. We also know that the ellipse will go through the point where the rocket burn took place. For simplicity, let's look at a circular orbit and let our rocket burn be in the direction we are moving. This point in the orbit where the rocket burn took place will be in our new orbit. The burn will raise our orbit on the other side of the sun. Imagine you were in this circular orbit here and you wanted to move into this circular orbit here. You would increase your speed in the direction you're going 
and that would raise your orbit on the other side of the Sun like this. Then you would wait until you got to the other side of the Sun and make another burn in the same direction that you're going which would then circularize your orbit. This is called the Hohmann Transfer Orbit, named after some guy who thought this up and published it in 1925. For a back of the envelope calculation, we're going to assume that Earth and Mars are in circular orbits. Earth is blue, Mars is red. We'll speed up our orbit in the direction that we're already going until we get into an orbit. Like this. This is the orbit that our spaceship will use to get to Mars. The min distance is the Earth-Sun distance. The max distance is the Mars-Sun distance. We can calculate A for this orbit with the A equals max plus min over 2 equation. We need to refresh our memory of what is Kepler's third law of planetary motion, which says that the square of the orbital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. Remember that we've already determined that the semi-major axis is lowercase a. And now we're going to use, for the orbital period, capital T. According to Kepler's third law, T squared over A cubed for Earth is equal to T squared over A cubed for Mars. Same for Jupiter, Venus, etc. For the Earth, we have this value for T and this value for A. What does this work out to be? We get 1.661 times 10 to the minus 19 day squared per miles cubed. This turns out not to be very convenient, so let's switch units. For T, instead of using days, we'll use the year, and for A, instead of using miles, we'll use the astronomical unit. Remember, one astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. With t equal to 1 and a equal to 1, then t squared over a cubed equals 1, which is a lot easier than that other 1.661 number. To test this out, let's use Wikipedia to find t and a for Mars. t for Mars is 1.88 and a for Mars is 1.52. Then t squared over a cubed for Mars is 0.999 something, which is pretty close to 1, so yay for Kepler. According to Kepler, t squared over a cubed equals 1 years squared per au cubed for everything in orbit around the Sun, and that includes our spaceship. As long as we use years in au, we can solve for the orbital period of the spaceship. It's going to be equal to the square root of a cubed for the spaceship. Now we want to find a for our spaceship, and we use the max plus min over 2 equation. We know that the max distance is the Mars-Sun distance and the min distance is the Earth-Sun distance. Plugging these into the equation, we get this 1.262 number. Previously, we found that t equals the square root of a cubed. Plugging this number in there, we get 1.42 years for the orbital period of the spaceship. The orbital period of our spaceship is the time it takes to leave Earth when we do our rocket burn, to go to the other side of the Sun, out to the Mars orbit, and returning back to where we started from. The time it takes to get to Mars would be half that, or 0.7 years, around eight and a half months. You might be wondering why we don't just go faster. We could burn really, really fast here, and that would change our orbit to something like this. Then we would only have to spend the time it takes to go this little distance here to get to Mars. That would be really nice, but unfortunately, it's just not feasible. The amount of rocket fuel needed is already well over 90% of our takeoff weight as it is. In addition to needing 10 times more fuel for the shorter trip, we would then need to use rockets to slow down once we got there, instead of using atmospheric braking. This would increase the amount of fuel needed by several orders of magnitude.